In this video, I am going to show you how to calculate the simple moving average in Google Sheets. So the simple moving average is an average that uses a range of prices in a number of different periods. What it does is it calculates what's called moving average because it tracks changes in price over time. So it's most often used with closing prices for stocks as a way to make tech technical analysis of the market for trading and investing. So I'm not going to go too much into the definition of the simple moving average, but to calculate it, we're going to use two functions. We're going to use the Google finance function and the average function. So first let's go over the syntax of these functions. So this is the Google finance function. And what the Google Finance function does is it can be used to fetch either current or historical securities information from Google Finance. So these are all of the arguments of the function. The first argument is ticker. So this is the ticker symbol for the security that you want to consider with the function. And you have to use both the exchange symbol and the ticker symbol. If you leave out the exchange symbol, it's, uh, it's going to decide on its own which one to use. The next argument of the function is attribute. And this is an optional argument that will be set to price by default. So there's a ton of different attributes that you can pull in with this function. Um, for our purposes, calculating the moving average, we're only using price. So I'm not going to go over all the options. Um, and then there is three other optional arguments. There's start date end date and interval and with interval you can either do daily or weekly data and so to calculate the simple moving average when I use the function this is what I am going to end up using this is the exact function I'm going to use in this tutorial so there's the first which is ticker so it's NASDAQ and then we're doing the Goog and then I'm using this to get the price so I have price here now for start date, I'm using the today function minus 30. I'm going to be um, importing 30 days of data into this. So today minus 30. If you've never used the today function, this just gets the current date. So I just used the function that imported the current date. So if I do equals today, oops, minus 30. Let me just fix that. You can see that this just gets the last uh, 30 days or 30 days ago. So if I'm using today minus 30 as my start date and today as my end date, um, that will give me 30 days of data. And then um, the last argument I'm using in this function is daily because I want uh, data returned daily. So that is the Google Finance function. Uh, the next function we're going to be using in this is average. And this is a pretty simple function. It just returns the average. And you have a few arguments. Um, the first is the value or range that you want to use for calculating the average. And then the second argument is optional where you can add additional values and ranges. So let's uh, combine these functions now to calculate this simple moving average. So again, the first thing I need to do is I need to use Google Finance to actually get my closing price information that I'm going to use for calculating the average. So equals Google Finance. And then the first argument is that ticker. So I'm going to do NASDAQ. We're going to do Google NASDAQ. inside quotation marks and then what we want to import is the prices and then our date range again is going to be the last 30 days so I'm going to use today minus 30 to get um, a month ago as my start date and then we're going to do today to get the current date and we're returning daily data and then I can close out my function and you can see I just imported the closing prices for the last 30 days. So these are the prices that I'm going to use to calculate the average. 
and now I can use the average function to get the average. So I want to do the last seven days of data. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to do my function here equals average. And then all I'm doing with this is putting in the last seven days into this range here. And this is my seven day moving average. And I will copy and paste this down. And now you have your moving averages here for this is a seven day moving average for the last 30 days of data. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. The hardest part about this is really getting this Google Finance function down, but it's really not that complicated once you figure it out. As soon as you have this down, um, the average function is pretty simple. And you can see uh, this really didn't even take that long after you're comfortable with both functions. So again, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.